happy, beautiful day. It's Pete Cohen here with a very special My365 podcast because this is the last ever My365 uh, podcast, but don't worry, it's not the end of uh, Pete Cohen and podcasts because we are launching the Pete Cohen podcast, the Inspiration Revolution. And uh I'm delighted that we're about to do something different, but hey, let's get ready for the last ever My365 podcast. This My365 podcast is called A Tribute to Rick Mayall. See you after the theme tune. Happy, beautiful day. It's Pete Cohen, the last ever My365 podcast uh, with a very special podcast for, for a few reasons. First off, thank you so much to all of you. You know, we've had uh, nearly quarter of a million listeners, which is unbelievable. Who would have believed when we started this uh, three years ago that it would uh, it would develop into, into what it has? Uh, listeners all over the world. We've had some amazing interviews from people like Dr. Rakowski to Andrea McLean to uh, Ben Shepard to Sally Gunnell to Joe DeSana so many awesome people in fact so many of our members members of the month who have just transformed their life my 365 has always been uh, all about one thing and that's about inspiring people to be better than their best every single day and um, that's my mission on life in life is to inspire people but we're about to take that to a whole new level uh, with a whole new load of, of features and, and my goal is to every single person that listens to this to actually feel that they have a coach they have someone in their corner uh, I know the value of that that transformed my life uh, and I have a number of coaches in my life now uh, coaching is all about taking you from where you are to where you want to be a massive theme of all of these podcasts have been about heroes uh, and uh, you know that word hero comes from the Greek word heros, which means the protector. And I want to protect people to protect themselves and help develop and inspire coach support train in more and more people going, you know what, this is the life I want and I'm going after it. And I don't know about you how many positive role models that you've had in your life, but um, I've had many. But one of them I didn't realize at the time, and that was Rick Mail. Now, you don't might not know who Rick Mail is, but if you grew up in the uh, 70s and 80s, you'll definitely know who he is because uh, he was an actor, a comedian, who was in a very famous program that had a massive impact on my life. It was called The Young Ones. He was also in another series called Bottom. He was in uh, Blackadder. Many of people remember Captain Flashheart. And there were many reasons why he was uh, such an inspiration to me. And he died a few years ago. He definitely died before uh, before his time. And I want to talk about a, a tribute to him because um, not long before uh, he died. Does that make sense? Not long before? I think that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> not long before he died, he was given an honorary degree at Exeter University. And uh, he gave a talk there. And I would encourage everyone to go and listen to that talk. And right at the end, he basically said, you know, these are four things which I'm going to talk about in a moment, that if you live your life by these four principles... Uh, your life will massively change. I'm, I'm a I'm a huge fan of a principle-based life, uh, principles based on your values, knowing who you are and what you stand for. And I talk a lot about the battle that we face, you know, the, the voice inside our head that some people call it a monkey, um, you know, I call it a duck, some people call it uh, uh, part X. Uh, some people call it the devil or the demon inside them. You know, this is what you hear from people. And it's not to say that one person is right and one person is wrong. It's just people describing their subjective experience of living in the world. I just see a lot of people at war with themselves. I mean, there's enough war in the world anyway, but it's it's tragic when you see the war that exists inside human people, the suffering, the sadness, the depression, the worry, anxiety that uh, is in a society where we do have a lot of choices, we do have a lot of freedom, and I think a lot of us are just making choices based on what other people are doing, based on our conditioning, rather than waking up and realizing, hey, you know what, I don't have to settle for what I have, I can change, I can be better, and that's the power of thought. You know, thought creates emotion, emotion is what is in our body, 
And we feel so many emotion based on what we think. If you change your thinking, you can change everything. But it takes work. It takes conditioning. And that's what I'm here to do, you know. And I will continue to do it with the Pete Cohen podcast, The Inspirational Re Revolution. We ask you to come on that with us and let me be your coach, continue to be your coach to inspire and support you to greatness. But one of the things I learned, you know, through this inner voice that we all have, uh, I call it a duck, um, that I also learned that we're all geniuses. This is something that the Romans talked about. And I often ask people, go and, go and Google the meaning of the word genius. And you'll see it says like intellectual genius, someone who knows a lot, someone who's gifted. But that's not the, the root of the word. Where does the word come from? It originally came from the Romans. The Romans believed everyone had a genius inside their head. You know, the part, the genius is the part of you right now that's getting you to listen to this. And maybe I've got your attention. Maybe you're making notes. It's the part of you that wants to get better. But that wasn't their idea. They got that idea from the Greeks and the Greeks called it a daimon. The daimon, the inner voice. And the opposite of the daimon was the demon. The demon inside us that will tell you not to do things, to stay in bed, to stay put, to keep you entrenched in the past. There are infinite ways of looking at this, but ultimately your life comes down to how you think what you say to yourself, and you can change that. And my goal is to help you get in contact with your genius and uh, help you take control of your of your life, your thinking, your feelings, your actions, and ultimately the success that you have in your life. So I had a coach for 16 years. Uh, he changed my life. He passed away a few years ago. I believe his advice saved my wife's life, which is another story in itself. Uh, and his advice helped me make a lot of money, millions, in fact. And uh, I don't say that to brag, I'm just saying it because if I hadn't taken his advice, I would have been screwed over big time because he looked at the contract that I was about to sign. <laughs> and I believe if I hadn't done that, uh, I would have, well, I'm not saying money is the root of happiness. And some people would say it was the complete opposite. But I think money is definitely the root of, can be, uh, your success. You know, what you do with your money is something completely different. And this is part of my commitment to to inspire people to take control of their health, their wealth, their happiness, everything. But the reason I say this is that uh, my coach said to me, uh, I will get to the tribute of uh, Rick Mail in a moment, but this is all kind of leading to that. My coach said to me once, he said, what's the nature of your mind? And I tried to give him an answer based on my training and psychology, and he just kind of shook his head. And he said, the nature of your mind is your mind plays tricks on you. You know, you try to go to sleep at night and you're thinking and you, you you think about, did you leave the gas on and you're worried about what people think and you, our minds play tricks on us. And he said, how do you conquer your mind? And again, I, I gave him an answer and he kind of just looked at me and he said, look, the way you conquer your mind is if you can see through what you're saying to yourself, if you can find some humor in what you think, you're in charge. You go from victim to creator. When we say laughter is the best medicine, what is it? I mean, I don't know, you know, children, babies just laugh for no reason. Maybe there's a reason because it secretes a whole load of hormones which make our body work so much better. We're not designed to feel stressed for excessive periods of time and worry and doubt and anxiety. We're not designed, we're not wired up to feel that all the time. It, it, we know that that creates a, not a great condition inside our body. But if we're laughing and we're happy all the time, does that create disease in the body? And from a very early age, from a very age of about, I think maybe I was nine years old, 10 years old, when I watched The Young Ones, which was just the most ridiculous program, I laughed my head off, um, well, not literally. And it, it really shaped me. It shaped my ability to find humor in things. And my dad was a massive role model to me. My dad grew up uh, listening to something called The Goons, which was uh, originally four actors, uh, comedians, uh, Spike Milligan, Harry Seacombe, Peter Sellers, um, and uh, another guy called Michael Benteen. Uh, and then it became three, and three of the funniest people. i never forget watching Inspector Cluzo in uh, The Pink Panther when Peter Sellers says in his French accent, does your dog bite? And he goes over to the dog, and the dog goes... Rawr, rawr. And he goes, I thought you said your dog doesn't bite. That is not my dog. And I just remember thinking that was absolutely hilarious, even though it was nonsense and Monty Python. But for me, it was the young ones. And Rick Mail 
playing uh, just a massive part of my life and I cannot even begin to tell you. Something he did before The Young Ones was he played a character from, uh, you know, Birmingham, maybe he was called Kevin Tuve, Kevin Tuve Investigates, and, uh, and it was just ridiculous. And it was this one week he was investigating advice and he goes, this week I've been investigating advice, which is a little bit like help. Well, not really. You won't be drowning in a lake going, advice, advice, advice. And I remember hearing that. And this is ridiculous. And I would recite episodes of The Young Ones on my on my paper round in the morning. And I cannot thank him enough for making me laugh. It brings tears to my eyes because I wish people could laugh at themselves a little bit more. Uh, and not take themselves too seriously. And I think sometimes we're frightened to use humor as a weapon. You know, something that, uh, you know, my, my ancestry of being Jewish, many funny Jews <laughs> there are from uh, Gene Wilder, Adam Sandler, Ben Stiller, but even going far further back, Mart- Marty Seligman and the record, the producer, the guy who made the film, uh, the producers, uh, I remember that springtime for Hitler in Germany. And you think about how humor is such a great weapon, you know, and I'm just crying these tears because, uh, well, I'm just human, right? Let me just play you a little bit of this for a second. Let's see if this will work. <laughs> Give me it! I think you did it on purpose because you know I've got a runny bottom. You keep going on. Look it still. Up. What? Lick it up every last time. <laughs> Neil! <laughs> Tough luck, buster! <laughs> oh, it's hard to really shut up, Neil, shut up! Oh, shut, oh, shut up, oh, shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! There's no one in here, Mr. Bolovsky! We're all holograms! <laughs> Dear me! Poor old Neil's getting bored! The most boring person in the whole world's finally getting a taste of his own medicine! <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. Vivian, why did you give him a girl's name? <laughs> and tell whoever it is that there's somebody who wants to see him. Oh dear, I could laugh my head off. It's crazy, right? Uh, and I let's just go to Rick Mail's uh, tribute. And you can watch this, just uh, you can Google it. It's unbelievable. It's such a and uh, I've watched many programs since he passed away about people talking about him and the presence that he had and uh, how much light he brought into other people's lives. And there's a, a program which I, I, I don't, can't remember the name of it, where he plays the father of, of someone, the father of, uh, 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 and this guy's actually, he's also a comedian in real life. And this comedian has said how much uh, impact, you know, we, we can have such, how much impact Rick Mail had on him. We can have so much impact on other people if we want to. You know, we can change the world. It sounds, it sounds like a joke. You know, we have this incredible power to bring light into people's lives. And that's what Rick Mail did. Please go and watch uh, what he did uh, at Exeter University. And his tribute, his, sorry, his, his speech was basically saying, all men are equal. No one can ever be your genuine superior. And I love that because I believe we are all equal. equal. I don't believe anyone is better than anybody else. Um, but we can be, be we can be a better version of ourselves. So all men are equal. No one can ever be your genuine superior. Think about that. Think about how you feel about yourself and realize maybe that is something I need to change. I know I have to keep working on that. It's so easy to go back to thoughts around I'm this, I'm that. No, I'm anything I choose to be. And then he said, your future is as bright as you make it. Now I could talk about that for hours. Your future is as bright as as you make it how bright are you making your future and for me this is this is everything being able to see where you're going and see a future in front of you not just a vision board but something where you can see and you have emotion attached to where you're going to be excited about who you are and where you're going you know to be able to say you know what the future is bright the future is mine and to be excited about it he also said that Change is, is, is a, a constant of life. So you must never, ever lose your wisdom. Change is a constant of life. So you must never, ever lose your wisdom. We, we have this ability to be wise. We have this ability to, to learn and grow. And we have this ability to draw on what has happened to us in the past. 
We have it. You have it. I have it. And lastly, he said, uh, if you want to live a life of complete, if you want to live a complete and full life, you have to be free. You have to be free. Love is the answer. Love is the answer. If you want to live a life complete, a full life, you have to be free. If you want to live a complete and full life, you have to be free. Freedom is love. Love is the answer. Love is the answer. Love, my friends. Not fear, not worry, not doubt. And if you're one of those people that wants to choose love, uh, it's such a powerful force. I'm ready. And I can't thank you guys enough who have been a part of what we've done over the last few years. I want to say a massive thank you to every single one of you that's ever listened to one of our podcasts. Uh, And please feel free to share it. Feel free to comment. Let us know if we can help you. Uh, In fact, visit um, PeteCohen.com. You'll see there's some great stuff that you'll be able to interact with. Uh, and you know, just let us know. We are here to help. That's what we want to do, and we will continue to do that. I want to say a massive uh, thank you to uh, Patty Dolbovolsky. We've been doing the Pete and Patty uh, Powerful Particulars podcast. We're going to continue to do one of those a month. I'm super excited about that. She's my coach. I'm her coach, and we love to help and inspire people. I want to thank the team, our, our team behind the scenes, who have helped me with all of this, from Ben Davis to uh, Nicola to Kate uh, to my wife. Uh, and I want to say the biggest thank you of all uh, to Casey. Casey, uh, my colleague in this, has produced every single one of these shows. Every single one. Isn't that amazing? Nearly 200 shows. He's produced them from the kind of, of his heart. And um, I could not have done this without him. And uh, thank you so much. Take take some time to think about, Vic, Vic, this is the voice of your conscience speaking. You killed Neil. I did not. I did not. Anyway, that's another story. All men are equal. No one can ever be your genuine superior. Your future is as bright as you make it. Change is a constant of life, so you must never, ever lose your wisdom. If you want to live a complete and full life, you have to be free. Love is the answer, my friends. Love is the answer. Thank you to all of our My365ers all over the world. People who have said, you know what? I want to take control of my life. I want to do more. I want to be more. I'm going to do it. It's so much of a better thing to do when we do it with others. But get ready for the Pete Cohen podcast, the inspirational revolution, which is coming to probably a pair of headphones somewhere near you. We're on we're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. We'll be on the Pete Cohen website as well, PeteCohen.com. Thank you so much. We love you all. All the best. And we will see you soon.